Welcome to the CGC show on AETV. AETV is the voice of higher education in Africa. The CGC show is the career guidance and counseling show that seeks to highlight career opportunities available in various fields of study and also demystify the thought that some courses studied in our universities are not marketable. The show is proudly brought to you by the Association of African Universities. You can join in the conversation by following us on our social media platforms at a underscore tv on twitter association of african universities on facebook and youtube and at aau tv official on, on instagram we are coming to you live from the headquarters of the association of african universities my makeup is beautifully done by gift darko and also my beautiful outfit by majestic outfits today we'll be discussing mining engineering as a career and my guest is here in the studios i'll introduce him after the break my name is ajara Wu. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, you are watching the CGC show on AETV. And today, we will be discussing mining engineering as a career. Let me give a brief background of my guest today. Um, he is a mining industry professional with 15 incidents, three years of experience in exploration, surface mining, underground mining, and mineral processing. He has knowledge and experience in developing and implementing health, safety, and environmental procedures and policies. He holds a BSc in mechanical engineering and also a master's in mining engineering. Engineer Steve Ajay Labi is my guest for today. Welcome on the show. Thank you. Um, I've given a brief about yourself, but I would want you to tell me more about who you are and why mining engineering. All right. Um, thanks, Adwa, and um, I'm excited to be here. So, yes, like you is. mentioned, okay. my my name is Steve in Ajay Lai. Okay. Um, um, you may want to add engineer, so that makes it engineer <laughs> Steve <laughs> Ajay Lai. Yeah. Um, I was born in a very small village in the central region of Ghana, okay. which is towards the north of that region. So, if you've ever been to Kakum National Park, okay. you've used that road, which goes okay. to my village. It's called oh. Kwamwano. Um, that is where I was born or lived until I was about 16 or 17, went to basic school there. Um, then I went to school in Cape Coast. I attended the pure technical school because my father had been advised that if I wanted to be an engineer, engineer. I had to go into a technical school, <laughs> you know, which was not entirely mm -hmm. true, but uh, that's where I ended up. Now, from Cape Coast technical to when I obtained a BSc to mm -hmm. become a professional mechanical oh, engineer. Yeah. That's that's a long journey mm -hmm. for your whole show. Mm -hmm. um, but long story short, um, I hold a BSc in mechanical engineering, mm -hmm. like you said, and I've been working in the mining industry since 2005 and okay. now. So that makes it 15 plus, plus years. Okay. Um, um, I'm a father, um, I'm a husband, and um, I lead a team of, of engineers mm -hmm. to, to maintain mining equipment one of the largest gold mining companies in the world. So um, you went to a technical school yeah. and you chose engineering, you decided to do engineering. Correct. What actually influenced you into doing engineering and why did you choose mining engineering? Yep. Okay, so my love for engineering started when I was young, right? Um, my father went to hustle in Nigeria, as we they used to call it in those days. So in the 80s, he came back with a chainsaw machine, which they, they called Doma machine. And um, as I was a little child, every now and then I would see my father split this mm. machine apart and repair it and all of that. So, you know, I knew about things like gajon pins, carburetors and pistons uh, yeah, way before I even went to class one, okay. you know. So that's where my interest in engineering started. And um, th that's why I chose engineering because mm -hmm. as a little child, I was fascinated by equipment okay. and, and how they worked and all of that. Now, why mining? Um, when I was in school in Cape Coast, I had a lot of friends from 
the mining towns of Takwa, Bogoso, mm. and, and Obuasi, and all those mm. places. And every now and then, we would sit and <laughs> we would have conversations about mining mm. and how it's nice to work in a mine and all of that. So that kind of formed um, a career opinion mm. in my mind that even though I was studying engineering, I would love to work mm. in mining. You know, so that's that's where my interest in mining began. Mm. Um, entry barrier into mining is very high. So usually it will be the same people moving from one mine to another. It's difficult getting into that industry. Um, but because of that interest, I, I started chasing mining back when I was in Cape Tech. And it took okay. seven years of, of persistent chasing to actually get into mining. Mm -hmm. um, so. Upon all the chases and being turned down in several companies and all of that, in 2005, um, I was lucky to do my national service mm -hmm. in a mining company after the many years of mm. chasing. And um, once the service was over, I think of the 13 or so people who did their service there, I was among the very few who were retained. Okay. And, and that's how come I've been in the industry. Um, I have been in for 15 years, like we said. Mm -hmm. And the, currently, the company I'm working for is the fifth one. Mm -hmm. um, I have been moving from mm -hmm. one company to another a bit. You know, Why? Just, just to... Um, that, so I'm, I'm naturally a progressive person, okay. right? I don't see myself as having been, uh, having arrived, mm -hmm. as we say, okay. you know. So I always want to add to what I know to make myself a better person. So you would realize that every move has come with a new set of, mm -hmm. of skill set that I have okay. learned. And so basically what has, has driven the moves mm -hmm has been my passion to learn new things, to make myself better. So mm -hmm. after 15 years and moving from one company mm -hmm. to another, for, you know, with five companies, I think I am at that point in my career where I can now consolidate all the experiences That's and great. gains and, um, and, and grow, mm -hmm. you know, and, and grow. So that's, that's where we have been. 15 years, mm. over 15 years of experience. Mm. How has it been for you? If you have to give an analysis of all the, of the 15 years that you've worked, your experience, how has it been for you? Uh, to be honest, I think it's been rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has been rewarding, and the reward has come from the many challenges that we have faced and have had mm -hmm. to, to overcome. Mining is, is, is tough. Um, harsh environment, um, very pressure environment. <laughs> if you don't have the hat, mm. you don't go close to mining because it's not like your regular five to f six, six or eight it's to five, five job yeah. in the city. You know, the the the, the, the shortest you will do in a mine is like seven to five. Mm. You know, and the environment itself. So it's very challenging, mm. um, but when you're able to withstand these challenges, come up with ideas to solve mm. problems, um, come up with ideas to make operations safer, mm. come up with ideas to ensure that the companies you work with are operating within the host communities in, in an environmentally mm. friendly and sustainable manner. You know, uh, I think it comes with a certain form of reward where you most importantly enjoy what you do and also um, you have an opportunity to live a mm -hmm. decent life. And so I think it's been, it's been a rewarding experience for me. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of lessons I have picked in mining which have helped me myself and my family in my personal mm -hmm. life. I mean, typical example is safety, um, something that we hold so dear and paramount mm -hmm. in the mining industry. Um, if you have been in mining, for a long time or even a short time and you allow yourself to to learn the lessons in mind and then safety obviously would manifest in in how you do things mm -hmm. and how you you lead your home mm -hmm. even so for example you don't sit in my car without your seat belt mm -hmm. um, it's a norm in my house my kids know about this mm -hmm. my wife knows you that's it you know so some add-on benefits like mm -hmm. that, which are not necessarily monetary or mm -hmm. financial, you know. Um, you, you become disciplined mm -hmm. because, in my opinion, 
after the military, I think mining comes next in terms mm. of discipline and how how we plan and we execute. Mm. You know, so um, I think all of this uh, benefit that that mm. I have. I have enjoyed in this industry and I keep learning mm -hmm. um, every now and then so yeah. <laughs> you mentioned some of the benefits I like the fact that you mentioned some of the benefits and also some of the challenges but we'll, we'll delve deeper into the challenges. Yeah. I want you to tell me what you think of the mining engineering industry or sector in the in the world or in Africa let's, let com let's come down to Africa in Africa currently how do you see the mining engineering industry do you think it is growing? Are there some things that you think, based on your experience, are there some things that you think the governments or agencies involved will need to put in place to make the job better and attractive to people, mm -hmm. especially students? Yeah. So I think um, generally mining itself is, is attractive um, in its current state in terms of um, of employment. Mm -hmm. It's uh, To be honest, it's a bit attractive than, than most most industries. Um, however, um, is there something we, we can do to make it better? Yes, mm -hmm. we can because, um, like I have said before, mining also comes with its own um, negative effect on mm -hmm. the environment if you want. And to be honest, it would be difficult or almost impossible to live as a people without mining because mm -hmm. everything in your studio has one element of mineral or another in it. Mm. And so if we don't mine, it means we can't produce the things we need to okay. live. So we mine so we can live. However, in my opinion, we should mine to live mindful of the next generation, um, which comes to, to the point of mining sustainably. Um, we have to have the environment in, in mind when we mine to ensure that we don't necessarily um, cause, cause damage to the environment such that the next generation will suffer because of what we did mm. to survive. Um, so I think that's, that's mainly one of the things that um, governments around the world can look at. Mm -hmm. and, and, and these days there are a lot of civil society organizations that are a bit um, vocal in terms of how mining companies and mining operations mm -hmm. can, um, you know, mine sustainably and, and also mine safely to ensure that the people who go to a mm -hmm. mine to work come back home safely to their families. Um, adding to that, I think the cost of mining is something that government can look mm -hmm. into okay. because we spend a lot of power in what we call combination. Um, to actually break free the mineral from the ore. We have to crush, we have to mill and, and separate and all of that. And this comes with a lot of power. And that usually has come with high cost. Mm -hmm. And so if um, governments have ways, and I believe there's always a way of doing something um, to, to produce cheaper and um, sustainable power, then mining companies would be able to to spend less mm -hmm. on inputs, yeah, yeah. including um, reagents and and things like that, so they can expand their operations and employ more people. Um, quite apart from that, in terms of skill set, I think uh, possibly there is a greater collaboration needed between universities, mm -hmm. the industries themselves, okay. and of course government, mm -hmm. um, to ensure that the courses that are taught in the universities yes. are what the mining industries or mining companies require yeah, okay. um, because sometimes you would realize there's there's a lot of disconnect mm. between what is taught in school and what is required on the field and so yeah, okay. if that collaboration is is enhanced mm. or it's it's encouraged then we make sure that we train people mm -hmm. who are not entirely ready, but near ready yeah, okay. for the industry so they can come in and fit in. Fit so in. I think, I mean, on top of my, my head, these are some of the few things I can think about. I can think about. That's very, very impressive. And I do hope that in this interview goes somewhere for the stakeholders and, and then agencies that are responsible for mining will take up your suggestions and then put some things in place to make the thing better. Let's come down to education mm. because that's what this show is about. Yeah. If someone wants to become an, a mining engineer, engineer, yeah. what are the courses or programs that one needs to study, mm. probably from the basic level through to the university? Okay. Can you take us through that? Okay. 
Um, so before I I home in on the mining engineering as a course okay. itself. You know, mining is broad, okay. and so there are a lot of interconnecting disciplines mm. that make up the mining mm. value chain. So we first have to prospect for minerals, not necessarily gold, but mm. diamond, copper, mm -hmm. iron, oil, and of that. Then we explore. Uh, then we design the mine, then we mine itself. In mining, we use equipment to drill and blast and haul. We crash, we mill, you know. So we, we have to count the money we make. Okay. You know, we have to keep records mm -hmm. of how much we have spent, which means accountancy and okay. finance. We have to purchase inputs, which means purchasing mm -hmm. and supply. We have to make sure we are mining safely, which means safety and mm -hmm. environment. Um, we have to make sure we are dealing properly and managing the interface between mm -hmm. the companies and the host communities and government, which means sustainability and, and, and corporate service and all of that. We have to maintain the equipment we use, which means maintenance or engineering. Um, we have to, to use chemicals to extract, which is metallurgy, you know. Um, in some places, we have to ensure everybody and the properties of the mine are protected mm. from intrusion and things like that, which is security. Yeah. So all of this, okay. you know, join together, make the mining industry. So there are a lot of career disciplines that makes mm. the industry. Now, back to mining engineering itself. Um, so that's one discipline of the whole industry of value okay. chain. Uh, mining engineers basically are the guys who, once we have identified that there's a mineral of value in a certain parts of the earth. Um, they are the guys who, based on the data available, mm. would design, you know, what method of mining to use. Okay. And what equipment we need to do that mining. How do you identify the mineral in the first place? So that's, so you start with, um, with prospecting. Okay. Where you, basic things like just use a chisel to dig the ground to see if there's gold. That's pretty basic. The, and to using um, scanners, mm -hmm. seismic scanners, to scan to see if there is okay. gold. And so that's that's the basic mm -hmm. one. You identify there is mineral with these basic tools, for example. And then you have to do exploration to actually give confidence mm -hmm. that the mineral you said exists really exists. And it exists in quantities that you can mine for profit mm -hmm. using today's mm -hmm. technology. Right. Okay. If you can mine that for profit using the prevailing technology, then it's not viable to go into that. Okay. And so that's how come you would be able to know mm -hmm. there is mineral here or there's that mineral there. Mm -hmm. So it comes from prospecting and mm -hmm. exploration. And so now once you have identified that there's mineral here through exploration, mm -hmm. obviously you have done calculation based on the drilling. Um, Exploration basically is trailing holes in the earth crust, as we said, um, to identify what mineral is there and to what depth, how deep does it go. Mm -hmm. So once you have done all of it, you'll be able to calculate or estimate the amount of minerals you have mm -hmm. there okay. and where they sit because you would not have them sit at one place. They usually would spread out based mm -hmm. on pressures and 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 you know, things that happen mm -hmm. underground that you are not aware of. That's more geology. Um, so that, once you have identified that, that's where mining engineering mm -hmm. come in. Um, where mining engineers will say, based on this data to say there's, for example, gold here in this quantity and grade, mm -hmm. and there's gold there, there's gold there, and the gold is deep down the ground we have to, or the gold is not very deep, we have to use, for example, underground mining method mm -hmm. or surface mining method to extract the gold. Okay. So that's what mining engineering, you know, is mm -hmm. about. So they, based on the data from geology, would design mm -hmm. a pit or a mining operation mm -hmm. based on the data. Mm -hmm. And then they would usually lead mm -hmm. the mining activity itself. So. Yeah. There's something we call a mine plan, which are usually developed by mining engineers, um, okay. which tells you um, amount of ore we have in certain areas. Mm -hmm. 
and the rates that we can mine based on the method that we have chosen mm -hmm. and uh, the mining method that we are going to use, whether we are going to go underground or whether we are going to just do surface, surface mining based okay. on what is there. So that's, that's what mining engineers mm -hmm. do um, basically. Thank yeah. you. You mentioned more of the job prospects in mining, mining mm -hmm. engineering, the people that and the people that you work hand in hand with Correct. to make the mining um, the mining job successful. If yeah. I should say that, I would want you to go deeper into um, studying um, studying at the basic and then the junior high school mm -hmm. level. But let's do that after the break. Okay. I'll do that after the break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break. Back, you are still watching the CGC show on AETV, and we have been discussing mining engineer. Our guest engineer Steve um, Ajay Labi has talked more about the job prospects, some of um, how to become mining engineers, and all of that. He has spoken about his experience so far, and the people that mining engineers work hand in hand with to make the mining um, the mining job successful. So I'm going to ask you, Steve, I would want you to tell me some of the skills needed, some of the skills that probably a student studying mining engineer should possess in order for an organization to employ them into their organization. Okay, thanks, Adjua. Um, so I think the first, first skill that, that is required in this industry is problem solving skills. Okay. Um, in my opinion and from experience, the mining industry has historically not been one that has had a lot of um, people with mm. with degrees, if you want. You. Mining in Ghana, you know, don't forget, started like over 100 years mm. ago with people who had no clue about <laughs> geology or mining engineering and all of that. But these people, you know, had some sort of problem solving skills to be able to find out how to extract the, the mineral from the ground or from the gang, as we call it. And so you need that problem solving skills to be able to do well in this industry. Okay. It's not so much about what degree okay. you have, okay. bachelor's or master's mm. or PhD. It doesn't matter mm. if you are not able to help a company produce more, mm -hmm. or if you're not able to help a company produce the same rate mm -hmm. but at a lower cost, if you're unable to do anything to help a company produce safely, um, then it's probably going to be difficult staying or growing in this industry because degrees are supposed to help us solve problems. And so if you are not using yours to solve problems, mm -hmm. then you may want to look for another company or another okay. job not in mining then also you need to be analytical um, mining is all science and, and mathematics so um, you need these skills basically and of course um, be able to work under pressure and be tough because it's a very tough environment mm -hmm. so in terms of skill set i think this these are some of the skill set mm -hmm. But in terms of the academics, yeah. um, how does one get to study mining yeah. engineering? It's an engineering program, mm -hmm. right? And as you know, all engineering programs are based on science and mathematics. Okay. Um, so at the university level or junior high, I think students so are supposed to take their mathematics classes very seriously. seriously. Okay. Their science class, especially physics, um, mm -hmm. Because in mechanical and electrical, you do more physics than, mm -hmm. um, than chemistry if you want. But if you want to do metallurgy, then you have to you know, do mm -hmm. a bit more of, um, of chemistry. So um, in addition to the everything or every subject that a student has to be seriously about, mathematics, science, you know, yeah. these are the things that um, students have to focus mm -hmm. more on right from the base mm -hmm. to be able to get to study any of the engineering, engineering programs, programs, including mining engineering. And which, which would you recommend the 
technical universities over the our normal tertiary institutions like the universities, the normal investors where some people do medicine and all of that. Would you recommend the technical universities over them? Yeah, thanks. I, I think it's it's about what a person wants to do okay. in terms of what their career uh, goals mm -hmm. are. Um, don't forget the in technical. This case, we are talking about mining. In so mining, yes, so yes, it still it still works in okay. that form because the technical universities, which were polytechnics mm -hmm. in mine days, mm -hmm. were established to fulfill a certain level of yes. leadership, and the traditional universities are supposed to fulfill a certain level of leadership. And so the approach to what you learn mm -hmm. a bit different from this. Um, so if a person wants to to go higher, a bit higher, um, in terms of leadership, mm -hmm. be able to be in management, um, even go up to the board level and all of that, then one would say that a traditional university is the place to go. If a tra person wants to be a middle-level manager, supervisor, superintendent, mm -hmm. and things like that, for example, then one would say, uh, based on, on general norms that yeah. the technical university is a place so. to go. But don't forget that now the technical universities are offering degree programs mm -hmm. as well. And so that, you know, kind of um, place equal, mm -hmm. if you want, with what is being okay. like, obtained from the mm -hmm. traditional universities. But, you know, underpinning all of this, like I have said, that the degrees don't really matter. Mm -hmm. It is what you do with the degree that mm -hmm. matters. The certificates, in mining don't extremely matter okay. what you do with it. And so you can have a degree from Colorado School of Mines, which is the best mining school in the world. And if you're not using that to solve problems, then mining is not a place for you. Okay. You can have an MBA from Harvard, with the best business school in the world. Mm -hmm. If you're not using that to help us grow our business, then mining is not the place for you, really. I so I think the focus for students should be you know, degrees are important, mm -hmm. but they, they only get you to the door. Mm -hmm. They don't get you in. It is what you can do with mm -hmm. the degree that gets you into the room. You mentioned that there are some, um, you have some people on the field that do not really have a certificate. Yeah. Because it's been, it's been a profession that has been in existence for a very long time. Yeah. Isn't it a challenge for you, the people with the degrees? Probably because they do not have the degrees, but have the problem solving skills yeah. and so they are still there but probably those who are finished and have the degrees they may have something that they, they may they may come to your organization to add on but because they are people with or <laughs> with there with experience already so you don't see the reason why you should bring in the degree students don't you think that's a challenge um, not necessarily, in my opinion. I mean, if there is a vacancy to recruit, mm -hmm. um, then there is a vacancy. Okay. So and if there is, no. if there is no vacancy, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't just add people to your head counts okay. because uh, so many people have completed universities and are looking for a job. I mean, every company would love to, but don't forget, mm -hmm. you are running a business with the money of investors. Mm -hmm. People have contributed giving it to you mm -hmm. to run a business. So you have to run it profitably, mm -hmm. and you will do that with a certain amount of people. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's not a challenge to say because there are people in already mm -hmm. with that degrees, then the degree holders you know, kind of do not get in. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's about the recruitment process. If there is a vacancy to recruit and somebody meets the basic requirements, then usually you are called for interviews. Mm -hmm. And if you ace the interview, you get a job. Mm. So not, it's, it's, I think it's everywhere, mm. um, even in civil service. People don't just recruit okay. because people have finished the universities. Yeah. People yes. recruit when there are vacancies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, share some of your challenging moments for to us. Um, challenging, like I said, it, it has been challenging but mm -hmm. rewarding. So I think mm -hmm. the, one of the the very first thing I saw was the first day I. I I uh, stepped foot on a mine mm. in the joint my national service. Um, so this guy came to call me mm. to say we should go on the field to look and inspect some equipment. Mm. We got into the pickup, drove to the field, and just before we got there, it started raining heavily. Mm. And we parked the pickup, um, and the guy got down and started walking in the rain to go inspect the equipment. And you know, I was sitting there saying, man, this guy, what? 
what does he want? It's raining, man. He come <laughs> sit down. And I was sitting in the car looking at him, and he, he went a bit further, looked behind, and was sitting in and just looked at me and said, look, come on, get down with me, let's go. So <laughs> then that was the start point for me. Like, man, this industry, you have to be tough. Mm. Um, it's, not, it's not your regular, you know, put on a nice shoe yeah, and get to the office. no it's not it's not <laughs> like that so that's where it started for me and um having having been in leadership i think my challenging moment was when i worked for a company called botlongia mm -hmm. um, it's a very old drilling company i think the the biggest drilling company in the world mm. over 100 years experience and i was in charge of engineering or maintenance for that company mm -hmm. and um it was very challenging because um, traditionally that department had been under what we call operations. Mm -hmm. And so I was the first engineering manager to, you know, win that off mm -hmm. um, the, the operation people. And that was like letting power go for mm -hmm. them. So there was a bit of power struggle. Um, but I mean, the lessons learned and being able to put in place the necessary um, communication procedures and communicate with your stakeholders and all of that. I think we prevailed and, and we made some gains there. Apart from that, um, we meet challenges every day and we solve them and they get exciting. Thank you. Yeah. I see. I wanted to clear some misconceptions about mining engineering. I went online and I also asked some people and they told me some of the perceptions like what do you think about the job i would i would read them out to you and then you tell me the facts mm. or the truth yeah. in it so um people said that uh, mining engineers are not really useful it's it's the geologists uh, that are um very very useful um i think that's a misconception okay um the mining engineer needs the geologist okay. um, same as the geologist needs the mining so engineer they are, they so they're both very extremely study. useful okay extremely but, but the person saying geologists, geologists can do their jobs too the uh, job they can do the jobs of mining engineers the same as the mining engineers mm. can do the job of geologists mm. you know so okay. as um, one of my mentors um, he's the general manager for a mining mm -hmm. company in ghana told me he says mining engineering is a collection of courses mm -hmm. and so you read mining engineering and there's a bit of geology that you would do there's a bit of survey mm -hmm. that you would do there's a bit of um, of mechanical that you do because mm. you do thermodynamics and fluid and all of that. There's a bit of electrical that you would do because mm. you study motors and things like that. So uh, a mining engineer can also do the work of a geology, same as the other way around. So they, yeah. they need each other. Mm. Yeah. And apparently a mining engineer does not care about the environment. If they see that there's a mineral there, they can probably stack the people, the residents in the community, and stack, they'll stack them so that they'll be able to mine whatever mineral they found over there? Um, that okay. is not entirely true. I mean, okay. if I say it's not entirely true, it probably appears there's a little bit of truth in it. That's not true. Okay. Um, before you can mine in a place, there are a lot of processes that go on. Okay. First off, you need alliances from the government, Each, no matter where, which part of the world you are. Mm. You need alliances from the government to be able to mine. And usually you deal with the EPA. Mm. There are a lot of laws in the country. And so before the EPA will grant you the permits to mine in a place, a yes. lot of things would have gone on, including your environmental management plan, what you're going to do to safeguard the environment now and after your operation, and, and, and what you're going to do to compensate people who are affected in the event that there are people who need to be relocated and all of that. So. And mining engineers care a lot about the environment and for those who do not care if that is true, there are laws to make them care. Okay. Yeah. Issa, um, Issa Abubakar sent me a question to read to you. He says, are chemical engineers needed at the mining sector? Definitely, yes, they are. So I have chemical engineers working as safety mm -hmm. managers and superintendents. Mm -hmm. Um, I have chemical engineers working as metallurgists, okay. um, and, and I have chemical engineers working in my team as, as, as condition monitoring and, mm -hmm. and DT technicians. So yes, chemical engineers so, are needed. Well, yeah. So they need them to do other things? Yes, you, you can do other things. The thing is, it's engineering, okay. so it teaches you problem solving and there are basic courses that like thermodynamics, like fluid, like mathematics, mm -hmm. you know, we all do them. So if you apply what you learn, you can you can work in okay. in a varied, you know, areas. 
what, why, do you, why do you see the industry in the next five years? I think um, the next five years will be exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so as you are probably aware, COVID came with a lot of challenges yeah. to most companies, but yeah. one of the gainers was actually the mining industry because okay. gold price actually kept going high oh, okay. and it's still staying at a very comfortable place for us in the industry. So, and once the gold price is good, mm -hmm. companies want to mine more, right? But again, we have to do that sustainably. Mm -hmm. and when companies are mining more, it means we need more people. It means we need more resources. Okay. It means we need more input. So I think the next five years, if we are lucky to have the good price sustained at this level, then the next five years will be exciting. Oh. Um, again, some companies are beginning to see the need to have more young people in leadership mm -hmm. positions because the future belongs to the youth, all right? And so um, for young guys who are coming up and who are studying mm -hmm. or watching, I think this is the time to really start looking at the mining industry. Um, some companies are opening up, you know, from the traditional, um, same mining mm -hmm. people moving from one company to another. Yeah to bring in, in new people, to bring innovative ideas and all of that. Mm -hmm. So the industry would be better. So mm -hmm. I think it's it's going to get very exciting in mm -hmm. the next five years. You mentioned the gold and some other minerals. Mm -hmm. How lucrative is this job? Well, um, I, I mean, I said before, it's <laughs> it's challenging, mm -hmm. but uh, when you are able to, to overcome the challenges, uh, you get the, the needed reward mm -hmm. that is due you based on what you have done and, and based on how you have helped a company mm -hmm. produce what it's re producing. So I think it's, um, it's, a, rewarding, mm -hmm. it's a rewarding industry that... Okay. Um, Your final words to anybody who is really mining engineering, or probably wants to do mining engineering? Um, my final word to people reading or want to read is that mining engineering is a very good profession. Okay. The world and the people in the world need minerals to survive. And we need mining engineers to help us mine these minerals to survive. And so uh, to a very large extent, our survival depends on people who mine minerals for us and so we need them today we will do tomorrow mm -hmm. and for as long as we continue to exist we would need mining engineers so yes. i think it's, it's something that people who have the interest should look into <laughs> well thank you so much engineer steve and jay labby for making time to come on the show to educate us on mining engineering the job prospects the benefits the challenges everything about mining engineering you are very, very grateful for your time. You are very grateful for your time. And thank you, too, for tuning in. This has been the CGC Show on AAE TV, and we discussed mining engineering as a career. If you have any questions or any suggestions, you can send them through our WhatsApp platform, plus 233-501238468, or visit our um, social media platforms at AAE underscore TV on Twitter, Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube, and at AATV Official on Instagram. Big thank you to Gifty Dako for my makeup and majestic outfits for my beautiful dress. This has been the CGC Show. My name is Aja Omi, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.